The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. I am the host, Karen Mann, of the webinar, and I have my team with me, Sudita, the co-chair of webinar. We represent the Human Development and Leadership Division of the American Society for Quality. This is a global division aiming to enrich the personal and professional lives of our members and non-members, the global community, to trump over current and future challenges. We continuously look for new speakers within the range of our body of knowledge, which can be found on our website. We host monthly webinars, so if any one of you or anyone you know is interested, we would be happy to review their application. The Book of Knowledge can be found on our website, www.asqhdnl.org. Link is also shared on the chat on the very right side, at the towards the bottom side. Before we begin the webinar, let me go over the housekeeping and some webinar rules. If there is any question, please type under question section and we will answer the questions. Webinar will be held for 45 minutes and then a Q&A for 15 minutes. If you want continuing education credit for 0.1 CEU, you have to be on the webinar for at least 40 minutes. You will receive a dedicated email from us which you can save as a PDF and send it to ASQ to claim your credit. So let's begin. Let me introduce you the speaker of the day, John Brecklin. John has been a full-time member of ASQ since 1987. After sporadic membership for the 10 years prior to that, he's an ASQ fellow and has served on the Greater Fort Worth Section's Leadership Committee since 1997 in various positions, including multiple terms as section chair. He has been active on HDNL Leadership Council for over 10 years. Recently, John has been engaged as a SAC member in the transformation activities regarding the technologies of availability to units and members. He also holds multiple ASQ certification and teaches the CMQ, CQPA, CSQP, and SSGB classes in the DFW area. He's a master black belt, owning his own consulting company, Key Quality 19 since 1999. His expertise has been taken from a stockholder to a quality inspector to a technician and continuing to quality engineer, supply quality manager, QMS manager, continuous improvement manager, and MBB in Motorola, Nokia, and AT&T. Various consulting gigs have given him additional experience in multiple other companies and industries. So as John has grown up in quality, he can speak to the challenges he has seen in the career spanning over 30 years. John, it's like incredible by one of the incredible one I have read. So the floor is all yours to take over. Well, thank you, Sunita. Uh, I didn't expect the five-minute introduction. I usually trim it down to the highlights about what this is uh, all about. My qualifications to talk on this are regarding um, getting engaged early in the uh, new ASQ portal development, my ASQ, and then giving a lot of feedback as they're developing it. and. Uh, uh, early user of what I could do in my uh, various capacities. So with this, um, she said 45 minutes, I planned an hour, we'll see if we can split the difference because I hope I don't uh, cut this so short that I end up making more questions. So let's get started here. Okay, gotta get off the menu. And on the deck. Okay, so my objectives are basically to talk to you about the member portal and specifically communities, discussions, members, and events, the most popular things you're probably using, uh, news, and then how to make your own homepage more 
oriented to what you care about. And then uh, once I get through those basics in the first half hour, we're going to explore a little bit about HDNL and that community. And also ASQ recently launched a new search platform. So we're going to look at that and how that uh, serves you better than the old one did. So let's get started. First of all, as I went out and started to get ready for this presentation, I logged in and I found that I had two different situations. I had when I was using a nine to five ratio, the typical laptop ratio or your typical monitor ratio, I got a menu that was horizontal. If I ended up shifting to a 4.5 ratio, the more square shaped, or if I looked at a mobile, I had a different menu and I was I needed to you know, click on this to get the menu and find the same topics, it's just in a different layout. So moving on, I'm gonna do all my display uh, presentation using the, the standard nine to five ratio. So when you first log in and to get the, anything important to you, you have to log in and use the same in login uh, credentials as you do to log into any ASQ website like ASQ.org if you end up going out there and search for stuff. Uh, this is a landing page. It's a quick welcome and um, what's going on, your communities that you're engaged in, any events that happen to be local to you. We're going to explore this a little bit more uh, at the end when we talk about that. So let me move into communities. So the communities is probably the most value immediately to you to get set up. Uh, we have different types of communities on the right side. We call geographic communities, which are sections. And out of 250 or so sections and member units, we only have 12 on the system right now. So when you go out there, you're probably not going to find your local one. You have to wait until your local leadership gets in there, sets it up, and opens it up for you. I understand there's another maybe 10 sections that have done the preliminary work but just haven't opened it up. So if you got a question about that, uh, contact your section leaders and ask them when your page is gonna be up and ready. It's a quite a long process to, to get it set up and, and operational and the training and so on. So uh, it's not overnight being able to be turned down, but they are in the schedule someplace. The other one, which right now is more important to you also is the technical at the bottom. These are the divisions. Right now there are three up and running, human development leadership, uh, quality management division, and one other. I'm not gonna go out and explore that now. That's an option for you. Uh, and this is the open side of it. So many of these are open source rather than behind the firewall of that section or that division. All of the sections are also open source, so you can get in and see what's going on in any of them at any time. Discussions may be something that you want to jump into. Uh, in this one, it's, sorry for the dog, thought he was out. Uh, this one is one where we have an opportunity for you to initiate or participate in any topic you want to know about. So as you can see, uh, there's 190 some people that have responded to the introduce yourself, 30 different topics going on with certification of which 176 people on that one have responded and found some information about what they're looking for. A lot of this will have Amanda Foster on it because she's a, a great early user of this and in lots of questions and so she poses a question, people respond to it in different ways, and you can follow a discussion. You can also customize what you see. The next one I use a lot is events. Here, a section even now, or a division even now, before they're fully on the system can post something. And on this one, we have a posting there about our professional development crews going on in September as a division. Uh, the Blue Ridge section that posted a webinar. And on this one, you can see a, another section, I don't know what 15 or 1115 is, have posted their dates. 
Uh, there's probably 40 different postings out there, and you can sort this by um, whether you want to see a, a meeting or a webinar or a conference. It's really nice to be able to get in there and search for what you care about. Members is the next one. Here's your opportunity to go out and search for any individual, and you can friend them like you would on Facebook or, or um, LinkedIn and so on. And then you have uh, another communication vehicle to get to them. Really convenient if you had contact with somebody and lost their business card or their email, or you just want to follow up with somebody that has a similar interest to you because each one of these does have a profile behind it should that individual or yourself wish to post something there. And this is filterable by name, by profession, by a variety of other things. Uh, the first thing you do is you go out and just register yourself and then you're automatically in the system to be found or to start finding others. You can block that if you wish. The news is another opportunity for you to get in and, and see what's going on. Uh, it's a drop down menu. You have the choice of uh, ASQ News, which I'm looking at right now, Community News, which is more local and newsletters that you may post within your, or maybe post it within your section, and uh, another perspective outside of that, which they call the view from ASQ, the view from quality in general. Uh, this one happened to be talking about on January 7th. They said that this page was going to change style. This is the change style. This news article has not been taken down yet after a week or so. Uh, Baldrick's looking for examiners applied by last week. So they probably take somebody if you really want to get in there. And online certification is the only way to get certified in 2019. So uh, take a look and see what's here and what's important to. And again, you have the ability later to follow any one of these. So the home page. This is the things that I think you would like to say are important to you in either quality or through ASQ. So you can customize your news and announcements and the one that I happen to have customized on mine was the thing about the recertification uh, being only online. I also uh, could customize my site and have either recent topics, popular topics, topics that I want to be aware of what's going on and be able to follow those topics. So you can create that. This one happens to be one that's just a default. I didn't do anything to set this one up. I just left it at the starting point. Uh, my communities. As a section, at one point, your geographic community will be posted. As a division, your human development leadership will be posted. Uh, if you happen to be a member leader or a regional leader, you'll have more postings that have to do with uh, those. And but this will be kept short until you develop it. And again, the one I found most relevant to me is keeping track of dates. I post things on there for my local events, uh, webinars that we're doing in the Fort Worth area, and uh, our monthly meetings that we have. This is also nice because if you're looking, if you're a traveler, business traveler, and you're going to uh, let's say Chicago. You can look up Chicago and see if they have a, a membership meeting going on. Or if you're traveling to Phoenix, uh, do they have a conference or a membership meeting going on? So you can search that uh, and, and find things that are in the area that you're interested in following up on. We had one of our local Fort Worth members. He traveled probably once a month. And wherever you go, you go out and look at the old calendar to find events. Now we can do that a little bit more proactively. Again, it's up to the individual unit, division or section to post the things up here in order to find them. But this can start to support and relieve any web pages that are hard to maintain because it's real easy to get an event up on this. 
There's also a couple of user tools um, that you have. As I click on my name, then this user tool came up with this variety of things. You have the ability to interact with other members or other communities uh, with the message board inbound to you. Uh, you can adjust your settings. I found one that's real easy to get to though is this little bell here at the reminder that you have messages. So I've got, when I put this package together, I had 12 messages that are available for me to read and review. And once I get to the message, I can archive it, I can delete it, I can comment on it. There's lots of opportunity. The other thing, if you click on the little down arrow, that's your account. Uh, obviously, it all got there is not significant, but you can modify your account. And here's where the customization happens. So the first customization is when you subscribe to something, you can decide what level of feedback you want and how frequently. Now, this was a default, so I, I don't uh, necessarily want uh, some feedback on on these topics that I have nothing here. There's a few more below this that I did, but uh, I would lose the title. Um, so some of these, if I were in my regional position, I would say I want instant. When somebody posts something, I want to get it. Other things at the end of the day, I'd like to get the, the posting on, on that one. Other topics that I may be of interest, I could post them just weekly or I can choose none. So you manage how much input you get and the frequency of that input by the type of topics that are going on. When they post uh, World Conference 2019, I'm going to get at least a daily notice on that. And the same with the Leadership Institute, which happens at the World Conference for 2019. I'll be clicking those up as uh, frequent feedback, frequent notices. Uh, part of the notification is also that you can not only subscribe to something, but you can turn on more about the frequency of which you do it. You can get it, uh, if you want to turn it on or off, is it all or something. As you can see, I've clicked on someone sends me a private message. I want a notification. Uh, somebody's commenting on my profile. It may be a question of um, it could get me a job. So I want to follow up with that, or maybe uh, how do I go about getting a certain certification, like the supplier quality professional, so I can respond to that. With that, I would like to open up the mics or open up and see if there's any questions before I move on to the next section. This is the general view that you are looking at as you log on to my ASQ. So, Dita, do we have any? And I believe you have an opportunity to raise a hand, so you can raise your hand while you're formulating your question. And Sadita or Karen can pull them up. Yes, if they can use the question uh, box and we can take them. So far, I don't have any questions. Usually they are done at the end, so maybe they're not used to it. But uh, okay. if you have a question, please type it on the question box and uh, we'll take care of that. I'll give it another minute in case so, somebody's slow typing. Yeah, one on. second because they're coming in, so. Oh, good. Is there a plan or timeline for all sections and divisions to be on my in my ASQ? Well, my old There's section a plan. is there already. Yeah, there is a plan. The timeline is as they as they work some of them into the what they call a backlog, the people that are the next priority, the next ten sections, as those get worked out, another backlog of another ten sections will come on. I have no access to that plan, so I have no no knowledge of what the total timeline is or where any section. And they're not doing it by area, so they're not giving Texas priority over uh, Arizona or California. It's every section determines their own order in the plan based on what they have now as far as websites and the ability to communicate with you. 
And then um, we have another one who is saying, uh, I'm in one section, uh, 1212, and I logged into my SQ and got in, but I don't see the top row menu selection like usual. I'm sorry, they don't see what? The top row menu selection. Okay, this menu up here. Uh, you have to log in in order to get anything more than just a couple of these. You can, you, friends, associates, can come into my ASQ without joining and uh, or without being a member and explore some of this content. So yes, if you don't see that, menu, see that menu, if, if you don't see that menu, you may see this type of menu. where you have to click on the right box in order to open it up. Mm -hmm. Another question? And then we have one um, that says, okay, and that uh, kind of responds itself. Will the notification uh, come to you as an email to the email address on file, or will I have to log in to my ASQ to see? The notification comes to you as a email notification. In order to get content behind it, uh, well, let me stop there. It comes to you as an email notification. It says, who's it from? And also a topic title. And then you have to log into my ASQ to actually your messages to access it. And then it's a kind of a two step. The first one is, when it came and who it came from. If there's a note there, you click on that and it'll open it up with the actual topic. And then you open it one more time to get to the content. I'm trying to get them to uh, make that a at least a two-step instead of a three-step. So at least you don't have to log in just to find out what the topic's about. And uh, the person who asked about the top row uh, menu is saying that I'm logged in. So I'm not so sure what he's referring to. Maybe if uh, they reach out to the section leader, um, what is going on with that? The person has no menu. Can you open their mic and we can ask them? Um, Brian, would you like to, let me see if I can find him. If I can drop out of this and go into my ASQ, but I don't think that would be a value for me to do it. And we don't have an opportunity to share screens with you. Uh, Brian, you are unmuted if you'd like to express. Hi, yes, okay. I went to IASQ and I, uh, I logged in. And so it shows me as logged in, but on the top blue, dark blue menu bar, it says my ASQ at the left, but there's no choices to be able to go through, but going down the page, I see welcome to my ASQ news and announcements, member only news and announcements, ASQ. So there's lots of links at the right hand side. I'm seeing my communities, my events, my bookmarks, my points, uh, community leaderboard, Luigi Sill points 2684, David Harry points 2357. So it looks so like you have everything but this. So do you have a menu, a box? To the right of your name or do you have this i'm not uh, i'm seeing my asq at the left but i'm not seeing anything else in that top blue ribbon at the top of the screen shrink your screen mm, let me go uh, or piece uh, over to the right side no, actually I, I can oh. i can see it okay no I wasn't at full screen when I went to full screen. It showed up. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, Les. <laughs> See, <laughs> I was like, uh, I, I thought I'm not a technical not. person. <laughs> I've had that problem okay. before. I, I yeah. To make okay. it easier to tell. Okay. I don't usually have to have a window full screen to be able to see the entire menu, but I now have it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Never experienced that either. We learned something. Um, then we have another question, which is, um, will existing section websites be required to be discontinued later this year with them embedded in the MySQ? There's a lot of discussion on that. Or the choice. Yeah, there's a lot of discussion on that. And I'm not authorized. 
I've got an opinion, but I'm not going to share it here because I'm not authorized to share opinions mm -hmm. on public things here. Uh, but uh, there is no requirement there's a move, here. There's a, there is a long-term move to eliminate section websites because of branding and legal issues. That's all I can actually give you as a, an answer. I would like to move on. If you got more questions, you can post them and we'll cover them at the end of the next little section here. Um, yeah, I have only one left if you want to. Oh, you got one? one? Let's take that one and we'll hold any after that. So it's saying, I'm the chair of the geographic section. Um, can I access the website where I assign the different chairs to members of my section? For example, no, that's sure that the person is a treasurer from this time to this time. No, that's done on a totally different system. Contact your regional director or your uh, staff member at headquarters, and they can give you the link to change, add, delete. Uh, I guess it's only add or change at this point, because mm -hmm. they're only uh, permitting right now to add the 2019 leadership team. If you send me an okay. email, I can also send that link to you at the end. And my uh, address. Manuel, you, ha you have my email, if you can email well, My email is then... on the bottom right of the page. Oh, you, it so, is? Okay, perfect then. jbreckline at usa.com, and I'll send you a response back on with a link to change those. Where can, okay. we, where can we find my ASQ, they're asking. Oh, you type myasq.org. My so it's separate, not like in Zoom into the asq.org. It's myasq.org. Yeah. Or if you separate. sign in to asq.org, at the bottom of the page, there's a link to bring you to myasq. Eventually, mm -hmm. myasq will be much more important to you than asq.org. So once you get it, I'm going to suggest you create a book, book bookmark or a favorite. Okay. Okay. Let me bring us back to where we were. And I'm going to move on. Oh, all right. Customization. This will save you a lot of notification. All right. HTML community. So we're going to look at this a little bit as far as what's available to you right now if you're an HDL member. If you're not an HDL member, then I uh, basically have to join the division and some things may be hidden. Other things may be available. M most of it is available. So this is the home page. What I did is, I'm going to back up one here, back up two, three, four. Over on my communities, I just click on HDNL division. And once I do that, it will open up this if you're part of that division. And the system automatically maps your membership to the divisions. So if you belong to HDNL and you belong to the Quality Management Division, both those divisions will show up when you click on uh, Technical Communities or on your home page. So here on the home page, we have basically the welcome. We have a little bit more about it. But most of the content is in the menus below. And as you can see, we have a different color scheme. When you get into division, the black big notice up here, and these are all um, blue on light blue. So I'm not going to cover anything that I covered earlier. So I'm not going to talk about discussion or members or events or news. I'm going to cover the things in between. And the first thing I think that may be the most valued to you is under files. The file gallery is a list of everything that's posted and it's posted here in the reverse order in which it was put up on the web page. So the most recent would be at the top. But of more value here is this issue of community folders if you're searching for something more specific. If you click on the community folders or, uh, or click on any one of these items, it will open up and replace what's here on the left with the files that are in this folder. So these happen to be primers, of which there are 20 listed, and the ones that were at the top are expanding your personal quality, leadership, and enhancing your personal value. 
and the other 17 are down below that uh, as you scroll down the page. If you want to go back and look at the webinars and their content, you click on that. Uh, newsletters, again, in reverse order, so the newest one will be at the top and working your way backwards. Another one that you may find useful, and it follows up with the webinar portion, are videos. On the video gallery, what we're doing here is we're posting the recordings that we're like we're doing right now of each one of our webinars. And um, there's no extra formatting here for not that, but there aren't that many, maybe 15 or 20. So it's easy to scan down through it. You click on it and it will go about opening up uh, a webinar player for you. Events, I'm gonna cover that again because these are some that may not show up immediately on the primary page. Uh, here we happen to have, because I'm a member of the community, um, of the HDNL Council, the articles uh, are due or were due on December 15th. Here's uh, all the webinars that we are coordinating within our division. And there'll be a list of going out uh, a couple months as we get them booked. The last one here is resources and uh, that I'm gonna cover. So I'm just gonna go to that page. If I click on resources, I got this as my starting page. Uh, a little bit about our leadership team, our division sponsors a scholarship. So it would talk about the qualifications for that and the timeline for that. Uh, we are constantly upgrading our leadership body of knowledge. So you can go out and look and see what's available. We use this wheel to represent our um, uh, one, two, four, five, six, uh, 10 bodies of, logic, uh, bodies of knowledge that we have currently listed. And as I say, we're continuing developing that either new sections of it or uh, updates of our current one. And if you want to find out about our cruise in September, here's the link to go to that. I encourage you. Um, it's worth three RUs and cheaper than going to the World Conference, even though I don't want to discourage you from going there. Come to both. They're six months apart. So questions about HDNL and our website. Open the or open questions here. I don't have a question yet. I do have a follow-up question from uh, Brian Ford on the full screen. Okay. Um, is there a way to do anything on his end so he doesn't have to go into full screen all the time? Because for the rest, he doesn't need to go full screen in order to see the menu. Uh, you can. You don't have to do a full screen. You can do a control and a down arrow or a control and mouse down. It will shrink your screen. Just for this page, I. That's that's evidently something to do with your computer and your preferences and your web browser setup. There's nothing I can advise you other than figure it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, and again, anyone any, else has any question? Now's the time for HDLF portions. Any questions and, uh, can also go back to the original. And if they, we still have our website, so, but if they go to the event portion, it's gonna take them to uh, my ASQ anyway. And uh, also the PowerPoints are no longer posted on our website. Um, for now, we're still posting on YouTube uh, channel, the video portion, but since they're here, uh, you'd rather even go under videos under my ASQ and, and have the recording. So if you want yeah. this, today's presentation, then within a few days, it will be posted there. Yes, HDNL has been actively moving all of their content off their current website and on here, so they don't maintain duplicate content. That's extra work for the leadership team that's managing these sites. I think we can go on, John. Uh, okay. All right, the last section here, I'm talking about uh, search. 
uh, you have two options. One is the search using MyAS2. And I found that two different search engines find slightly different contacts. Both of these are superior to what we had four months ago. It's a much better and it's filterable and so on. I'll cover all that. So you can either search my ASQ and you have that link near the top to do that. Or you can go into ASQ.org and I happen to go in books and standards because of your searching for that kind of material. You can go there. But there's also a search engine that works here and the articles that are still resident in the ASQ.org. Everything has not been moved over to my ASQ, but there is a plan to transition all valuable information over to that. And when I say valuable information, it's articles, newsletters, quality progress content, uh, member leader information, uh, book references, just a, a total variety that's on the ASQ.org will eventually be put on the uh, my ASQ. So let's go a little search with my ASQ. So I hit the click on uh, just a random search. I happen to look for a certification. In this case, it was CQPA, the Certified Quality Professional Associate, uh, because it's a, a new certification. Uh, its target audience is uh, supply quality engineers, people that deal with the uh, suppliers, purchasing people, anybody you can get to say, hey, let me find out about that and learn the skills and get the certification. So the top two ones, first of all, this is from Amanda Foster who said, oh, hey, I'm interested in this. Tell me about it. What's the value of it? So she asked a couple of questions. And then uh, David here gave a response from his perspective of that. Now, I'm going to move on to another one where I did some more filtering and searching. That's uh, quick and easy, and it popped up with seconds. I did another search on member leaders, in case some of you were in that. And the content, uh, 533 various cont or responses on, came up on this. Uh, at the top was some feedback from one of the uh, division leaders and past section leader, what's going on with transformation. Somebody else asked something about the ITAG, which is a leader forum that happens at the World Conference. So lots of content if you're searching for member leader positions, uh, section chair role, uh, newsletter role, you can find that kind of stuff. So here I did a search on books, and specifically, 94 contents come up. So it's pretty shy on the book listing yet. It hasn't been integrated back to my ASQ.org. Uh, but it did make a mention immediately of a new search on books and standards and training and other things. So I thought that was interesting to see. And I went and did a search for FMEA on, on uh, I'm sorry, on ASQ.org. I did it on the MyASQ and got a lot of content. Here I've got 1,300 uh, responses, 1,368 results, a lot to wade through. So I said, well, do I care about what's on ASQ or TV or certifications or blog? And so I said, let me just narrow that down and look at ASQ.org. And then I also said, not just FMEA, but FMEA books. And I'm down to 489. And right at the top, uh, I have an ebook and then I have a regular book. So you can see it, it was just seconds between using a filter to narrow it down and getting my content. I'm going to go back to the um, my ASQ and the filters there. I didn't actually run a filter, but uh, my I did a search on FMEA and I got multiple items, uh, 48 of them here, and then I searched by relevance, and then I could have broken this down and searched by blogs or communities or something else. Uh, 
But again, it's really easy compared to the old system, which pulled up everything except what you wanted first. And no filtering. And there's Amanda again saying, I've never done an FMEA, where do I get started? And here's a response to that and another response to that, but at the top happened to be an article. So with that, I've covered all the content that I had anticipated covering, and I'm open to any questions, and I'm permitting we can actually go out and uh, explore uh, a couple of these things live. So I'm open Thank for you, general this questions. This was actually very helpful for me personally. <laughs> Good. It was more kind of uh, the headache to even go and try it out, even though it's uh, everything looks way more organized. Yeah, just like Brian tried. <laughs> <laughs> so you said uh, you'd get notifications on things that you make up your settings. And I like that they have it personalized depending on category. So yeah, if you get we're not getting want. any questions right now, I can drop out of this and go live into the my ASQ platform and I, I can have show one you. for now maybe you can do that and I think that's a good idea to go up to the actual platform all right um, the question is on the search feature of the events if I look at a specific event then when I go back I have to scroll down the list again yes not, is I'm there not a way to go back to yet. where I was on the list I'm not happy with that feature either, that the, the system seems to have very poor memory of where you left it and trying to get back. Okay, so you'll see the full list of the events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. once, once I see that that's working, then I will bug them about something else. I'm very critical of what's not working, and I constantly give feedback to the coordinator. and. In the MySQ, in the discussions, there is a feedback mechanism that you can say, I don't like this, why doesn't it do this? Can and you show that? Because that's the actual, the actual question. Is, is there a place we can submit items like that to MySQ? Yes, there is. And so let me go out to oh, right here. I have it open. So I'm not sure where I'm logging into, but I'm going to log in. It could be either one. This is uh, your ASQ.org. Yes, this is ASQ.org. So I'll show you how to get to the other one, and I'll actually go and log into that one. Uh, this is a dissatisfaction for, factor for me. It takes forever. OK. Oh, evidently, I the login bounces over to the other one's back. So, this is the same page that you saw earlier that I've been monitoring. So right now I have an inbox of 23 items that went up from 12 from two days ago. So to, let me go into one here that uh, may be of... Okay, so I'm part of uh, the, the region organization as a deputy regional director now. So I got a, an alert from Bud Newton, Sylvester Newton, who is our leader in that group, came in a couple days ago. So I have to open it to find out what it's about, and he's giving us an agenda, and it's actually sitting in this Geographic Communities Council. And if I click on that now, now I have more details about it, but I still don't know what it says, so I have to do a download of a file. and then open it or save it. So this is a word you document. You mentioned there is, a feed, there is a feedback portion? Yeah, I'll get to that You're in a moment. Showing. I'm just going to go through okay, the messages. Okay. So if it's not open, and mine was. So here's, here's the full content. I have uh, a word document that says what we're going to talk about is the uh, overhead plan to talk about it at the last meeting on January 11th. So I'm going to get out of that and we'll go someplace else. So, oh, I can't do anything except read it. So if I'm going to follow up, I got to go back at least one level 
And these are the menus of what are out there. By clicking on archive, I can't keep it. I got to go back one more level. And then I can mark that one. Is there any space limit? Uh, and then I can select this archive. No, I've had 30 of these things when this thing first started. But if I've got, uh, so let me go to my email where you can, I can show you the way this comes in. And I usually get the notice and trash them, so I gotta go out there and look. Deleted items. All right, here's your update. So it came to me, and it's called an ASQ update, but it's a notification. And here it's telling me it's uh, from who, on what specific topic, uh, in what community. So this happened to be the member leader community. And it's all of our current uh, section region listings. Mm -hmm. So I open that and follow through. I can't do anything other than opening here. It doesn't get rid of it back in the other one. So eventually I have to go back to my messages to do anything with that. All right, so let's go back out. I don't need that up there anymore. All right, my home. So events, there was a question about events. So I can either search for a specific one or I can look at upcoming, which are all chronological. So this was posted for January 1st, January 16th. I'm gonna shrink my screen here if I can. No, I can't. Can you, I can you choose which one you wanna see? Like let's say you join a community, a section, and you only want to see those or you, you see everything here? Well, it's public. because I map to Fort Worth as a section mm -hmm. and the geographic area of North Texas, this comes up on my basic menu. So it's already knowing who I am and where I'm at. And I'm a treasurer now for something, so I'm getting an annual audit flag. Sorry, I, gotta I mean, you, you won't see Boston once because you are based uh, in Texas? I won't see Boston unless I search for Boston. And you've got, uh, I'm sorry. So it's not chronological? Search. Yeah, everything here basically is chronological. But if I search. Let's say the conference, Boston 2019. You'd have to search for it? It's, it's in the list, but there it is. It popped right up. Boscon. Now, if I have looked out to whatever the date is here, April 1st, it would show up on the April 1st list. Okay, so it, it would show an event, would show regardless if you are part of that community or not. That's correct. This is an open source. There's very few things on here that would be close, like uh, our ECC Section Affairs Council meetings. They would not show up here if you were not part mm -hmm. of that community. Public, yeah, okay. And uh, you mentioned there is a feedback uh, area somewhere? Yeah, let me, let me find that. Discussions. Okay, search for uh, feedback. Feedback, quite a few threads to follow. Cynthia is the manager, the owner of this uh, system, uh, ASQ staff. So let's look at this, quite a few threads to follow. Let's see what she says about it. We've got a menu in the way here. So let's open that a little bit more and find out what she says about it. Um, 
So here's a specific article that uh, somebody gave feedback to. Uh, let's do a uh, my AIQ feedback. Let's see what we get. My menu's in the way again. So we got 65 different things to find out what's going on, who's doing what, when, you've got release notes, so who's just got completed, they may tell you what's next on their on their backlog. Here's a suggestion, timelines improve or need expanding by a, a member. And he explains what Thank he's you. dissatisfied with. So if you so want to create a new thread, basically. Yes. Or is would, there a contact would, person? You would create it all the way back out at this point. Okay. So there is no official submit. It's just a, nope. a discussion hoping somebody will review. How about sending it to an ASU dedicated person? Well, to start with, it's just an open thread. The purpose of this thing is open source. If somebody okay. felt that it, uh, whoever's monitoring this, this is monitored. If somebody said, well, that sounds like a certification issue, they would move it under certification category. So there Who's is some management of this. From ASU. Pardon? Who's accountable from ASU to review the, the technical Cynthia. issue? Or Cynthia is Cynthia? the person who has the highest level, but she would call on somebody else if she needed some added expertise to manage. I'm going to come back to events because I, I think this is a, a great tool and anybody with any kind of uh, authorization can get in here. So I ended up creating a, I have a webinar this afternoon. I went in and created this uh, a couple weeks ago. Eventually you'll have, I could put a welcome sign up here or something like that. That's a new feature that is put in. But here's Who the information. Those, right. Do you have to be a member leader? I don't know. I just, I am, I did, so I don't know oh. what the authorization is. But right now, I know Steph, Stephanie is putting up the posting for the division. So you have a list of what's available, when it starts, it's the webinar, it'll get listed, more details here. So I'm Categorizing it as a webinar. It's and where is the registration? Oh, okay. I have a registration link right here. I have to put that in. It's not automatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you set it up to go to webinar. Right. And then the note about signing, signing in a little early just to make sure you don't miss anything. And if you have problems, the contact information. I created this so I, I have the ability to edit, manage, delete. Mm -hmm. But as a general practitioner, I couldn't do that. So let me come back to events, upcoming events. Let me open up. Uh, well, that's that's ours. But if I open that one up, I do not have the ability yeah, to edit it. Ah, there I am. Looking good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so if you go scroll down. Okay. So it's Just all the content that we posted here, which is similar to the newsletter or direct link that you got. This is what you would have gone into to register to it. More information about it. My bio, which more than needed. Mm -hmm. But I don't have anything except the ability to comment or the ability to um, become interested. I can I can click on interested so it gets me in the list of people that may want to attend. Oh, it. interesting. And um, or you can just click for okay registration. So can you uh, explain a little bit the communities portion? So somebody who just logs in, sure. do they have to? And they're part of a specific section. Do they see all communities or do they see their own okay. community because they are part of that? All the communities are available. My community is not listed. 
So when I signed in, it knew I was from my membership record. It knew from my zip code or something that I was Texas and, and North Texas specifically. Okay. So if I click on geographic communities, mm -hmm. and these are all those that are currently in the system today, Carolina, Central Iowa, it looks like they're all alphabetical. Is there a way to follow uh, a community so that you can follow yes. their events or? or? Yes. Yes. Uh, here's here's one that's been very. You know, some of these are small sections, uh, but uh, let's see. Is there any logic on the way they are ranked? Alphabetical. C Alphabetical. C H I. Yeah. Or you can search. Right. Mm -hmm. So I search for Holland. But you have to add or follow your own community, not because you're a part of a section, uh, it will automatically recognize you as a member of it and show it on your... Yes, my you have the automatic website. recognition, but if you want more, you have to click on, on that. And how and do you, you follow? See? Pardon? How do you I'm follow not following anything right now. It's, it's over here in the presentation of my account. I mean, you cannot go into a community and click somewhere as following it or no? Yeah, let's, let's say I'm interested in Las Vegas. So once I'm here, I can uh, do something about subscription. I, I've never done this, but I know it's possible because I've subscribed to other things. I can follow a person or I can follow a division. So let me go back to communities here. I can't follow Boston because Boston's not here yet. But let me go back into. Sorry. Around too much technical. So, human development leadership, which is part of my community, and of our, I'm going to encourage everyone to come call to sign oh, up. Our 2,000 members, we only have 24 in here, but it is public. I can go into the quality management division, which has a lot of stuff. And they got you know, 17,000 members and 1,700 logged in, Six Sigma. They've, they've gone very are well. Are those yeah. members following or are those the actual members? Followers. So just followers. So how do you follow? Can you go and show me like how to follow a community? I'm running out of time here, but I'll, I'm willing to continue. All right. Uh, if, you, if you just show so they can I'll see try. how they can add. All right. So let me go to quality management division because I know I'm not following them. Okay. Patience. See what I got here. Time to request messages. I don't want that. My account. By the way, the right click doesn't necessarily give you a notification. Subscriptions. So if I want to subscribe to anything. Logs, resources, QMD. So I can get a weekly follow up. I'm already subscribed to anything to do with sections, anything to do with surveys. Okay. So that's the first step. And let me make sure there's always a save. Always look for a save button. Okay. And then. I'll come back up here and my account probably at the top. Notifications. Oh, they're both here together. And I have lots of choices here also. Okay. I'm not gonna click any at this point, but you can decide and you yeah. can turn them all off or turn them all on. 
Okay, thanks, John. Um, we are uh, at three o'clock now, and uh, we really questions? appreciate you going over. We don't have any questions. I think we covered uh, as you discussed through going over there. And um, today's presentation, as we mentioned, will be posted on my SQ community under files, so you will find the presentation and also handouts if in this webinar uh, attached and will also be posted under videos recording and YouTube channel. Our next webinar is already set up for February 13, and Ms. Uh, Erika Dawan, uh, she will be talking about how to get uh, big things done through the power of connectional intelligence. Registration can be done under my AS2 community events, as John just showed us. Um, our website as well will bring you here, so you will not be able to register through the website, but it will take you to my ASQ. To get notifications for future webinars, you can follow our LinkedIn page or you can sign up for our newsletter, which is in our website. There is a one minute survey, which is what we use to uh, make any changes and adjustments to meet your needs. So it will pop up on your screen as soon as you close the webinar. For those who are attending over the phone call only, you'll receive a follow up email uh, within an hour and you'll find that survey. So please do that so we can uh, see if we need to change anything for you. Uh, see you credits for those who attended 40 minutes, as uh, Kiran mentioned in the beginning, you will receive a separate email within um, these one or two days, and uh, you can save that and claim your credits with ASQ. Thanks again, uh, everybody, for being here, and we look forward to having you on our next webinar. Thanks, Kiran, and thanks, John, as well. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Signed up, friend me.